love song so true. And now, Stella Dallas. The True to Life sequel is written by us to the world-famous drama of Mother Love and Sacrifice. In my beautiful memory. And now for our sequel to Stella Dallas. In Washington, with her daughter Laurel and Laurel's husband Dick Grosvenor, Stella Dallas is falsely accused by Dick's mother, Mrs. Grosvenor, of stealing an Egyptian mummy. Stella, however, through Jeff Cantrell, an underworld acquaintance of Stella's old admirer, Ed Munn, discovers the real thief to be Rashid, the twin brother of her friend, Sheikh Ahmed, whom Mrs. Grosvenor is sponsoring in society. And Stella upsets Rashid's scheme to get $15,000 from Mrs. Grosvenor. To save Ahmed's family honor and avoid embarrassment for Mrs. Grosvenor, Stella agrees to keep the matter a secret upon Rashid's promise that he will keep out of their way in the future. Now it's the next night in Laurel's apartment, and Stella is having after-dinner coffee with Laurel and Dick. Well, Stella, how does it feel to be back with Laurel and me in our apartment? Oh, it's just swell, Dick. Oh, Mommy, it makes me so happy that you're staying here with us instead of at that hotel. I never would have let you go there in the first place if it weren't... Well, it... I know, Lolly. You're thinking about the little misunderstanding you and I had coming down from New York on the train. Well, yes, I was. But that's all cleared up. And now I'm never going to let you go again. I still feel kind of guilty about taking that room away from Baby Joan's nurse. Oh, you didn't take it away from her, Stella. It's your room, and it always has been. Of course, Mommy. And anyway, I'd really rather have the nurse sleeping in the same room with Joan. Oh, both of you are sure doing everything you can to make me feel welcome. I guess you don't realize what an important person you are to everybody, Stella. Why, Mother's singing your praises from the housetop. Why shouldn't she? After Mommy saved her from giving $15,000 to Rashid. I'm sure nobody but you, Mommy, could ever have discovered that Rashid was Ahmed's twin brother. We all thought Rashid was Ahmed. Yes, but you didn't know Ahmed had a twin brother, and I did. And if I hadn't remembered that Rashid's accomplice, Jeff Cantrell, was an acquaintance of Ed Munn's, I'd probably never have found out the truth. Well, Rashid's out of the way now, and we'll probably never hear from this man Cantrell. I don't think so either, Dick, although Ed Munn's scared that he might. Who is he? Yeah, but that's only because Cantrell has this bad check of Ed's and has been threatening Ed. Oh, there's the front door buzzer. I wonder who in the world can be calling on us this evening. I hope the maid tells whoever it is we're not in. I'd like the three of us to have just a quiet evening at home tonight. Yeah. Hey, Stell! <laughs> oh. oh, where are you? It's Ed Moon. Hmm. He sounds pretty boisterous to me. Shall we let him in? Hey, Stell! Come and tell this... Made it's okay for me to come in. I better go out on Lolly. He'll never go away without seeing me. Hey, Stella! Come in, Ed. Why did you tell Stella to bring him in here, Laurel? It sounds as if he's been drinking. Maybe he has, darling, but but after all, he, he is a friend of Mommy's. I don't think Stella's any more anxious to have him around here than we are. They've always been good friends, you know. I thought that was all washed up. Why did Stella have to bring him here to Washington in the first place? She should have let him stay in New York. Well, if it hadn't been for Ed Munn, we'd never have found where this man Cantrell was holding Ahmed a prisoner in New York. And when he told Mommy he was scared of what Cantrell might do to him, Mommy had to let him come back here with us. Oh, just the same, dear. I think... <laughs> well, Lolly. <laughs> oh, I'm glad to see you. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Munn. Oh, hello, Dick. Hiya, boy. Hello. I'm awful sorry, Dick, but... Sorry? Say, what are you sorry about, Stell? Ain't nothing to be sorry about. <laughs> Won't you sit down, Mr. Munn? Yeah, I say, I don't care if I do. <laughs> say, I better sit down before I fall down. <laughs> hey, say, what's everybody looking so solemn about? This ain't no time to look solemn. Here, Ed, uh, you better have some coffee. Coffee? <laughs> Say, what's the idea? Go ahead, drink it. It'll do you good. Hey, Stell, <laughs> I spent $2 to get this way, <laughs> and I ain't going to spoil it with no black coffee. <laughs> oh, why'd you do it, Ed? <laughs> oh, I just had to have a little celebration tonight. But after this, I'm through. I'm glad to hear that. Oh, yes, I'm going to make something out of myself. 
I'm going to settle down here in Washington and make something out of myself. Aren't you going back to New York, Mr. Munn? Oh, I can't go back to New York. If I go back there, Kent will bump me off. Ed, you mean you're going to live in Washington from now on? Sure thing you know, Stella, old girl. I'm going to settle down here and make something out of myself. Well, if you're going to make something out of yourself, Ed, don't you think it would be a good idea to start behaving yourself right away? Oh, no, I told you, it's just a last little fling after the night. Finish. But you're not serious about staying in Washington, are you? Well, I can't do nothing else, Dick. Cantrell would kill me sure if I went back to New York. Oh, that's a lot of hooey, Ed. Jeff Cantrell ain't bothering about nothing except keeping out of the way of the police. He thinks they're looking for him for kidnapping Ahmed. Yeah, well, he ain't going to think that after seeing Rashid. How do you know Rashid's going to see Cantrell? Sure he's going to see him. Say, hey, listen, Stella, I bet those two have got their heads together right now. I'll bet Rashid's gone to New York and is talking to Cantrell this very minute. Well, Rashid, so it was this Stella Dallas dame who got Ed Munn to let your brother out of his flat and upset all our plans. Yes, Jeff. And I'll never forget, just as Madame Grobner was about to sign the check, Stella Dallas walked through the door. And 15 grand flew out of the window. I needed my cut of that 15 grand, Rashid. I needed it bad. No more than I did, Jeff. You? <laughs> You'd have thrown it away in a month. And I suppose you, my dear Cantrell, would have given your share to some deserving charity. Never mind what I'd have done with my share. A punk like you can never understand. Indeed? And may I ask I'll why... I'll skip it. Needling each other won't get that 15,000. I'm just plain jinxed this year. My luck shot. Oh, come, come. We're both extremely lucky to have escaped so lightly. Unpleasant as it is to have lost Mrs. Grosvenor's money, it would be even more unpleasant to be facing life in prison. How do I know I won't be facing it yet? They cannot touch you without involving me. And as I've already explained, my brother Ahmed knows that if I were tried, he would have to testify against me. That ought to be a pleasure for him. You forget that I am his brother, his twin. The ties of blood mean much to Ahmed. As much as he hates me, he feels it his duty to protect me. Okay. But what about the others? They are as anxious as Ahmed to keep the whole matter quiet. The trial would mean that Mrs. Grosvenor would be exposed to the world as the fool she is, which would not only be disagreeable for her, but... Also embarrassing to her son. He's the one that's married to the dame you were trying to make time with, isn't he? Yes, Mr. Grubman's a young man with a brilliant future, I understand. He's employed in the banking firm of Mason and Company. Arthur Mason? The big shot banker? Yes, and Mason is pushing Mr. Grubman ahead very rapidly. Would hardly help his career to have his mother made a public laughing stock. No, I, I guess it wouldn't. Don't sound like a bad place to work, Mason's outfit. Are you thinking of applying for a position? Anybody could do worse than work for Mason. A guy like him wouldn't hire anything but high-class help. And he'd see they got a square deal, too. Say, uh... Say, what's this Grosvenor guy's first name? Richard. Richard Grosvenor. How does his wife stand with him? If you mean, is he in love with Laurel? He is, madly. Okay. Then Laurel's not the tough baby. Her mother is, eh? Oh, but Jeff, I would not call Madame Dallas tough. I mean hard to put something over on. Hard to bluff. Oh, well, I imagine Laurel has led a more sheltered life than her mother has, and naturally she's more naive and, uh... Timid? Cantrell, why are you asking me these questions? Just curiosity, Rashid. Just curiosity. Uh, if you're looking for an ashtray, there's one over on that table. Oh, thank you. Well, who's the girl in a photograph, Jeff? Never mind. Well, surely you're not jealous because I look at her photograph. She's very pretty. Your girl? She's not my girl. Oh, no? Then perhaps you would not object to introducing her to me. It may be that I will have better luck Shut than up. you... That's my sister. Your sister? That's right. And you've got about as much chance of meeting her as you have of sprouting wings. So, you have a sister... You've hidden her very well. Yeah. And she's going to stay hidden. See? She has written on the photograph to John from his devoted sister, Evelyn. John? Why does she call you that? Because that's my name. Oh, your real name is John Cantrell. The Cantrell part's phony, too. Oh, Jeff Cantrell is an alias, and you are really John, uh, uh, John what? Sometime when you can sleep nights, you might try guessing. Oh, I begin to understand the... Lovely Evelyn does not know Jeff Cantrell, and Jeff Cantrell's friends do not know John X. 
who is, I suppose, a highly respectable man, a brother no girl need be ashamed of. I should like to meet your lovely sister. Listen, punk. If you want to be measured for a ah, shroud... calm yourself, Jeff. My path is not likely to cross your sister's soon. I leave tomorrow for Florida. Florida? What are you going to do down there? Well, I've been invited to, uh, shall I say, work in a gambling casino at one of the smart winter resorts. Why don't you come along, Jeff? We might find something for you, too. No, Rashid. Sounds too fancy for me. Besides, after what you told me before, I think my plans will include a little trip to Washington pretty soon. So Jeff Cantrell is planning to go to Washington soon. How will his visit affect Stella and her loved ones? And what are Ed Munn's decision to settle down in Washington? Don't miss the new developments in our sequel to Stella Dallas on Monday.